I don't think we are right yet to claim to be Vishwa Guru. We're not a great generator of knowledge, a great innovator. We're actually an importer of knowledge, of technology, of ideas today. Uh, and this can change. Of course, we want like this right through our history. Of course, it can change, but not today. Secondly, I'm not sure that this is a sufficient goal. Because being Vishwaguru doesn't necessarily mean that Indians lead better, more prosperous, safer, secure lives. Leading from this particular government, uh, it's been seven years now, and it it seems to all of us that it's uh, very much uh, obsessed rather or preoccupied with the image of being an emerging power, a leading power. And it tries to project that image through actions that it, it that would sort of convey that image. So if we look at, uh, say, for example, the current COVID vaccine diplomacy that it, it sort of unrolled, it rolled out or even other this so you talk about that in your book a bit you know not of obviously not the covid vaccine diplomacy but this whole concept of uh, modi's vishwaguru sort of that projection of his image so do you think the realities of this country does uh, sort of uh, you know is commensurate to the image that is being projected by this particular government well, you know, I think I make it quite clear that I don't think we are right yet to claim to be Vishwa Guru. We're not a great generator of knowledge, a great innovator. We're actually an importer of knowledge, of technology, of ideas today. Uh, and this can change. Of course, we want like this right through our history. Of course, it can change, but not today. Secondly, I'm not sure that this is a sufficient goal. Because being Vishwaguru doesn't necessarily mean that Indians lead better, more prosperous, safer, secure lives, which is our fundamental job to create an enabling environment for the transformation of India so that Indians can achieve their potential, not to change the world or to get revenge or to gain status or to get other people saying how great we are. So, and I think actually what's happened in the last few years is that foreign policy is being, being used for domestic political purposes more than it used to be perhaps before. And it's therefore, as you said, it's foreign policy is part of domestic image pro projection and is used for those purposes. Uh, and when it comes to a choice between the impact of what we do abroad or at home, it's clear that that foreign policy comes very low in the ranking of priorities. Uh, after all, if you start calling your neighbors termites and so on, it, it gives you some idea of where they are and they draw their own conclusions. So it seems to me that that's where the balance has shifted. I mean, the world, we, all this projection of India, great rising power, global power, now Vishwa Guru and so on, this is essentially us. The world, I think, is much more realistic. Would you recommend that government, uh, you know, uh, hesitate in allowing Indian entrepreneurs to take uh, funding from from uh, from China or from Chinese companies? You know, after seeing what's happening with Jack Ma, uh, is that something? Is that a new dynamic that uh, uh, that that we should be concerned of? And, and just how do you read into that? It depends on what the money comes with. Money is fungible, right? You, I mean, if you take the money and along with that give power on your board, management power, whatever to them, yes, I think that is a whole different calculus. But if it's just investment for the sake of investment, portfolio investment, venture capital investment, uh, take their money and run, I, I would say. Build your industries, get your money, get your technology from wherever you can and make it your own. Uh, you know, Deng Xiaoping was asked in very early when he opened up the economy, roughly 82, and they were building foreign hotels on Chang'anji, on the main boulevard in the middle, uh, the Avenue of Eternal Peace in Peking. Aren't you worried? All these foreigners are buying properties and building hotels here. And he said, 
and you know they could strangle our economy and he said what will they do they'll pick it up and walk away which is true they then have a stake in your success uh so it depends on how you structure the deals and on how you regulate them and what you do I and mean, that would be my my response in any case uh I think the figures that the Chinese have just put out for the first quarter of this year show a record increase of 42% over the same period last year in India-China trade. Uh, if you look at the figures that DIPP has put out for Chinese expressions of interest for investment in Indian industries, startups, etc., after April, when we introduced the, you know, the prior approval for any Chinese investment, all those figures are up from April 2020 onwards to December. All those figures are higher than before. So, and this can't be just pushed from the Chinese side. There's also pull on our side. Uh, so for me, actually, this is a much more complicated area than just, oh, we'll decouple. Oh no, we won't allow. Uh, I think we have to accept that some of this is in our interest also. After all, cheap Chinese goods are good for the Indian consumer as well. Uh, but more than that, I think we need to look at how we can build this into a relationship where the dependencies um, are minimized, but the benefit is, in, is maximized. And I think that's possible, but it'll take a, a fair amount of fine tuning and work. So I have been um, hearing from the senior BJP leaders about the new position India would have in the, you know, in the geopolitical scenario in the post-COVID world. <clears throat> this, of course, you know, we heard much of it uh, after the first wave when India had managed to, you know, uh, kind of contain the pandemic and also control the situation to an extent. Uh, one, how far you believe in this, you know, this India's position in the post-COVID, uh, you know, geopolitical scenario and its importance. Do I think COVID is affected? Certainly, the way we handle the second wave is going to affect our image and so on. But basically, if you look at the geopolitics of it, COVID, to my mind, has accelerated existing trends rather than changed them or shifted them. 